As discovered in recent videos, OTBD was one of a kind plague with a lot that has been changed for the better throughout the years. However, some weirdly uninformed killer mains still believe that OTBD was way better than it currently is. But here's the thing, let me actually prove the opposite and give you 10 reasons to dislike OTBD as a killer main. Reason 1, Doubled Window Shack. Let's go back to the beginning of DVD and quickly visit the beta which released on May 31st, 2016. This initial DVD version was the starting point for the game as we all know and love today. But here's the thing, saying that everything was perfect from the get-go is straight up a lie. For you see, killer powers in general were very different back in the day, much weaker in fact, but let's actually talk about the first Shack version really quick. As you know, the current shack is already a really strong structure. One window, one pallet that is actually unmined gameable for the most part, and all in all a loop that could win or lose you an entire match if played right or wrong. Further, the loops surrounding the shack on some maps make it even stronger than it already is. Looking at you, Garden of Joy. Yeah, especially Garden of Joy. I mean, that freaking car pallet is so unnecessary in my opinion, but, but I, but I kind of like digress a bit. The shack that was included in the first ever publicly available version of the game was even more miserable than its current version. You don't believe me? Have a look yourself. Two freaking windows. One entry and nothing else. Have fun trying to catch up because it's absolutely impossible if the survivor player has at least 50 hours, which isn't really much. If you now think reason number one was bad, Granted, but now watch out for the next two reasons that make the shack for the killer even more miserable. Reason number two, no entity window blockage. Yes, you heard that one right. For the first five months of DBD until patch 1.1.2 on the 23rd of September 2016, there was no entity window blockage in the game. Not many of you guys have played during that time, granted, but as a guy who has been a killer on version 1.0 just recently, I can assure you that this is one of the most painful things ever. Yes, the double window shag never made it love the better, but you still have other structures that you literally couldn't do anything about. Granted, you may think now that I'm a bad killer main. If I'm that good, I could clearly catch up to them, even if the entity window blockage wasn't a thing, right? But there's more. Reason number three, no breakable walls. Breakable walls exist because of two reasons. I want to help you navigate the random map easier. This is seen on the main building of Garden of Joy or Imperfection on the game, for example. All the metal doors open when a gen is finished, but if you don't have the time to go around in order to defend the gen, you can just break the wall and defend the gen right away. The second is to ease up loops and help the killer catching up. An example of this, Dead Dog Saloon. Almost every breakable wall there serves that purpose. The two walls in the main building probably are the two most destroyed walls in the entire game as they weaken the main building so drastically for the survivor side. Back in the day, or to make it even more brutal, until the 9th of March 2020, there were no breakable walls. And this made buildings such as the Rancid Abattoir or the Fractured Cowshed so much stronger, thus creating reason number 4, Infinite. A loop that can go on forever without any possibility of ever catching up. Two of the most annoying infinites abused by all survivors alive, Fractured Cowshed and the Rancid Abattoir. Two windows with no entity window blockage or breakable walls as we've learned. Could if played around this just meh? Hold up the killer forever and this is what literally happened to me when I had the chance to have a chase myself around the abattoir infinite. You may think now, but hey, what about vaulting? Couldn't you as killer just try to mind game vaults, fake them like nowadays and maybe with that catch up? Reason number 5, vaults in general. Yes, generally speaking, vaults were horrendous. It took the killer 2.6 seconds in order to vault just once. In that time the survivor was able to vault 7 times. A slight difference, but just slightly. Another fact perhaps, survivors were only able to fast vault back in the day. No matter from which angle they approached the vault, they only fast vaulted and it took them until patch 2.5.0 on the 22nd of January 2009 in order to give survivors a unique medium vault animation and therefore adding medium vaults in general. So despite introducing medium vaults, as a killer main, you couldn't possibly say what the survivor is pulling off before that significant time. But hey, not that it mattered anyway. If you're now good enough in order to injure someone or actually down someone, another depressing fact comes right alongside it all. Reason number six, insta heals. Okay, 
listen. The current anti-hemorrhagic syringe is annoying. 16 seconds after use, you heal one health state right on the spot. Until patch 3.3.0 in late 2019, the styptic agent instantly, yes, instantly, healed one health state. Does that sound fun already? Okay, let's crack on. The anti-hemorrhagic syringe, on the other hand, fully healed you. Yes, you heard that right again. It fully healed you. So let's say you had to mend. You could use it in a literal second and just be fully healed right on the goddamn spot. Further, the syringe was usable on damn people too. Imagine this add-on with the current buckle up. If that doesn't sound utterly horrifying, I don't know what is. Healing a down person to completely fall in just a matter of one second. Huh. Oh yeah, I know what's even worse. Reason number seven, generators. 60, 65, 70, 80. And then on July 19th, 2022, behavior finally increased the time to 90 seconds. On its own, this would already be enough to make this reason valid. Just envision the current meta in that by data with the 60 second gen speed from the better. That's outright unplayable. To add to this, until patch 1.2.1, survivors had no efficiency penalty while repairing a generator. And to add to this even more, gen regression wasn't a thing back then. Wait, what? Reason number 8, no gen regression. Want to kick a gen? In February 2017, the killer was finally able to do it. Before that, there was simply no way of delaying gens other than chasing, hooking and injuring survivors to force them to do other things besides repaying a generator. With patch 1.4.0 you could finally kick it, but it was introduced much weaker than you currently have it in game. After kicking the generator, you were only able to regress up to 25% over a 70 second time period which equals to 0.29 charges per second. So in order to remove just one second of repair progress, you had to wait 3.3 seconds. This is simply atrocious. Nothing else but that. Luckily, this was removed with patch 1.8.0 and ever since we got, this, we got some awesome gen kicking perks alongside to make our lives a bit easier. But when it comes to gens, this right here wasn't the worst of it all. Reason number 9, old brand new parts. Equipped, they instantly repaired the gen and this stayed in the game over a year. Just insane. As if a 65 second gen needed an add-on that helps you to do the gen in under one second. Jesus Christ. And finally, reason number 10, the hatch. Okay, let's tackle the final straw of the worst old DVD had to offer for killers. Being punished for killing people. Yeah, you heard that right. Back in the day, the hatch became visible when the number of completed gens was equal to the number of alive survivors plus one. Meaning that if 4 gens have been completed and the killer finally got his first hard earned kill, the survivors could find the hatch, open it with a key and escape as a free stack without ever completing all 5 gens. Should I add more salt to the wounds? Yeah, okay, let's do that. Until patch 2.7.0, the killer was not even able to close the hatch. And not being able to close the hatch led to hatch standoffs. Killer and survivors arrive at the hatch at about the same time. Now, the following situation happens. The survivor decides to jump in the hatch, the killer will grab him, resulting in the survivor being killed. If the killer, however, decides to hit the survivor, the survivor will escape during the hit cooldown. Some people were utter maniacs as some of these standoffs lasted literal hours and you can watch them on YouTube. I, I try hard fast for those who like to do nothing, I guess. And yeah guys, that rounds it up. 10 reasons why being a killer main back in the day would have absolutely sucked. Why do I do this video? This game has come a very far away and this is actually what I want to showcase here. Complaining and criticizing is an important part of gaming in general. We want the game to improve and that's why we complain like insane driven people sometimes. I just want you to remember to stay civil and realize that the game is undergoing constant change that in the end leads to an overall better experience. My name is Ron Agony and thanks for watching.